Today we're going to go over video four um, of Astro Express package here and we're going to learn to build a table and we're going to load some data into that table. So we're, first things first is we're going to explain what Astro tables are and how they work. We're going to build the table using Astro command tool and then we're going to load data using N cluster loader. So let's go ahead and get started. So if you see here, this is really the data definition language or DDL that you use to build a table. And if you're familiar with SQL, you're pr pretty much familiar with the way this table uh, command looks like. So it's create table public dot bank web clicks, and it's made up of columns and fields. Customer ID, which is an integer and null. Session ID, which is integer and null. Page, which is the page name, which is varcar 100, and date timestamp, which is a date timestamp of a click. And what this is, is a simulated, very simple um, clicks on a bank's web page, simulated data. We have these three predicates that really make it unique to Aster, and we're going to go through these at distribute, row, and compress. We're going to go through each one of these individually in the next section here. So, as you can see, the create table statement is pretty familiar, you're pretty familiar with it. It's pretty uh, similar to an ANSI SQL statement. But we have these unique predicates, and one of them is distribute by. We have two options. We have the hash option, and we have the replication option. The hash option allows you to take very large tables, tables with more than a million records in them, um, and distribute that data across all the workers in our collection. Now with Aster Express, you only have one uh, worker, so this isn't as important, but when you work on a cluster with many workers, you'll want that data spread as evenly across that uh, collection of workers as possible, as not to create skew. And so what you want to do is pick out of your data file the most unique column out of the mix. So I'm just going to make it easy. I'm going to choose customer ID. I also may want to check, uh, select a, a column that I may do joins on with other tables. So um, that's why I chose customer ID for this particular hash. And what this is going to do is spread that data across all the workers by this customer identifier. Replication tables are tables that are smaller. They're about a million records or less. And what that does is it makes a copy of that table on every worker. And the, the benefit of that is, is that I don't when I do joins with other tables, so a replication table would be like a dimension of tables, so it could be like a user or a, a customer table or a products table or something like that, it has a less than a million records, and I want to join that to um, this, this bank web clicks table, I wouldn't have to push that data across the network on across the clusters, and it will make my uh, network IO impact less. So that's pretty much how distribute by works. So let's go to the next one, to storage, the storage predicate. In the storage predicate, you have two options. You can choose row or you can choose column. Now, if for our example, we're just going to use a row base because we have very few fields and we only have four fields here. So using a column table, we probably wouldn't get much benefit from it. Um, but uh, column based tables allow you to store data in a column or fashion, meaning that each field really belongs to its own uh, instance in a, in a column, in, in, a, in a row. Um, and the benefit of that is if I have a very wide table, meaning I have tables that have you know, 50, 60, 100 fields in them, and I'm only going to use a few of those fields in my queries most of the time, I'm going to benefit from a columnar type of um, uh, uh, table, when, especially when I go to query that table. But as soon as I go to where I'm going to use 50% or more, say 60% of my columns in my table, I'm not going to get that benefit if I'm in a column or fashion. So I'd want to use a row fashion table here, which basically stores data in a more traditional way. Um, more on that in subsequent videos uh, as we go through this, but uh, for this point, that's, that's the difference between row and column. So columnar. So we're going to use row for our example here. And then finally, there's this compress low, or compress medium, or compress high. And that does exactly what you'd think it would do. It compresses the data to save space on the Aster cluster. And, you know, I recommend that you use low or medium, but never go above high. I mean, that's just, it'll be too much um, I.O., especially for very large tables. And the kinds of analytics we do are generally against very large tables. So if you compress high, you're going to spend a lot of CPU cycles and memory cycles uh, decompressing that file or that table to actually use it. So that's compression and, and compress low. You don't have to use compression. If you don't specify uh, one of these commands, it will automatically default 
to compress none, zero. Um, if you don't use a storage command, it will automatically um, it'll automatically default to a row. And if you don't use a distribute by hash or distribute by replication, it will automatically distribute by replication. Be very careful when you go to distribute if distribute by replication. If you have a table with billions and billions of records in it, and believe me, you will. Um, if you ever get on a on a real aster cluster, it will make a copy of that entire table across all the workers, and it will be a uh, it'll it'll take up a lot of space on your cluster. So, all right. So let's go ahead and let's build out that table. So I'm going to go into Aster Command Tool to do this. As you can see here, I've got Aster Express load, and I'm going to load that up. And we're going to go to the queen, which is 192.168.100.100, and this is the IP address of the queen. And I'm going to use port 22. So I've loaded it, and let's open it. All right. Excellent. So we have login as. We're going to log in as Aster. And our password is Aster. And it should take us to a Linux prompt. Great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to log into Aster Command Tool. Aster Command Tool is a query facility that's automatically on the on the cl Aster cluster that you can use to issue commands like the user ta the create table statement or queries or anything like that. So excellent. So now we are logged into the Beehive database. And um, we're going to check to see if that table exists before we go forward. So we issue a slash DT, which shows the list of all the tables on the Beehive database. As you can see here, we don't have a um, Beehive data. Uh, uh, excuse me, we don't have the bank web clicks data. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to issue that command. And you can cut and paste that out. You can see here, it's OK that it went across the other lines. So that really what makes the command run is this uh, semicolon right here. So let's go ahead and run that. And yeah, excellent. So the table is now created. Now let's do something. Let's check out something interesting here. Let's take a look at our Aster command tool. So now you can see that I actually executed. Let's let that refresh. And now you can see that I, you can see my Aster my create table statement. You can see that it finished. I can go into and I can click on that and I can take a look at that and there's the actual statement that it ran. So if I have pre-existing running queries I can actually see the execution plan that it took. And that's really valuable especially if you have long running queries and you need to see what's going on and if you want to see a um, very detailed explanation of the execution plan that it took. So okay great. So now that we have our table, let's make sure it's there. So we'll go back and do the slash DT again. And let's see if it's there. Excellent, it is. So let's go ahead and query bank web clicks limit 100. Now I always put a limit statement on top of my query so I can limit the number of rows because I don't want this thing to go back if it's got a billion records in it which is not uncommon for it. So you can see here, the table does exist and we were able to query it and there are no rows of data in it. So we're going to now go in and we're gonna load some data. So let's quit out of, of Aster command tool and we hit a slash Q and we're back at the Linux prompt. So the next statement is we're gonna go look at the data file that's contained within that we're gonna load and that's also on the queen. So I come in here and I do a DIR to directory to see what directories are on my system. So I come in here and I do a CD demo, change directory, demo, and I go and I do a DIR again. Great. So you can see here these data files are already on our system. As you can take a look here, I've already um, unzipped this bankwebdata.txt file, which came from the bankwebdata.zip. Um, to, do, to do that, you would basically type in to unzip that file, unzip bankweb data.zip and you just hit enter and it would start to decompress that file and get that bank web uh, text file out there. I'm not going to do that again but I'll leave that to you to do that. Alright, excellent. So the next thing we're going to do, and let's stretch this out here a little bit, All right, is we're going to load data. And to load data, um, well, first let's do this then. Let's um, take a look at the, um, the, the first 10 records 
of that data file. So you can take a look at the contents of it. Excellent. So you can see here, this is the first 10 um, columns of my bank web data te uh, text file. So you can see here, head negative n 10 bank web data dot text. As you can see here, I've got a customer ID, which denotes defaults to this, and it's a tab delimited um, you know, file. It's got a session ID, a page, and a date timestamp. So there's my customer ID, this is my session ID, this is my web page that was clicked on, and this is the date and time of the actual click. So what that tells me is, is my first column in my file has my headers on it of my, of my file. And that's really important because we don't want to load that data into the system. And I'm going to show you how we uh, get around that. So let's jump back out to the PowerPoint deck here. And let's take a look at the end cluster loader command. So end cluster loader is a utility that exists on the queen and also exists on the loader node and allows you to, um, to, to import data into Aster, into a table. So if you look here, let's take a look at the command. End cluster loader dash u db super user that's the user ID, dash W, DB super user, which is the password, dash D, which is the database that we're going to load into, skip rows, this is really important, we're dash dash skip rows one. So remember if you looked at our file, the first row contained the column headings of the data. So we're going to skip that row, and then we're going to load our data into public.bankwebclicks using bankwebclicksdata.txt. So let's go ahead and give that, and here are the predicates and the different arguments down here to, uh, for you to look at and as well as um, you know, to, to see how all this works. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Run that end cluster loader command. And this could take a little bit of time to run. So let's go ahead and get that going. Excellent. So now you can see we're loading data into that table and let's go out to our AMC again and let's take a look at what's running on the server. Just go back up here, go to dashboard. Okay. So you can see here we're doing copy commands. So you can see that this is still running. Let's come back up here. I've still got one running process. Let's go ahead and click on that. It's about, I think it's about a million records plus. It's not a big deal, but you can take a look here. You can see the status of your query. If you wanted to cancel it, you could click here and you can actually cancel the query. Now, what's neat about Aster Management Console is that it can be completely secured, meaning that I can really limit the powers of what people can see and what they can do. Now, you can, you can just have people that can log into Aster Management Console and they can only see what they're running. And then you have much more powerful accounts that can see everything. And so this is, I'm logged in as the most powerful account, so I, I can actually um, take a look at and see what's really going on in that infrastructure. So we're going to give this a few seconds here to run. It may take a little bit longer, but it, it, this is Aster Express, so it's going to take a little bit longer. It's running VMs and whatnot. So that said, let's see, we're running about a minute, 32 seconds. It should be finishing up here soon enough. And there's also neat things you can do with end cluster loader by, oh, it's done. Excellent, so you can see we're done. Let's go back out to the Aster uh, command tool. I'm back on the putty session. You can see we loaded about a million records, a little over a million records, and it took about a minute and a half to run. Now on a, um, on a cluster with multiple workers, on one of our appliances, this file would have been loaded in just a second or two. Not even that, you wouldn't even have noticed it. So let's go ahead and let's jump back out to the Astro command tool and let's query our data and see what's in there. So I'm going back out to Astro command tool. There we go. Let's do a slash DT to see if our table's there. Sure enough, it is. And let's issue a select star from bank web clicks. And let's limit that to 10. And sure enough, there's data in our table. So congratulations. Follow these instructions. You go through this uh, like I did. You should be able to have data in an Aster table in no time. So that's about it for today. And I hope you 